Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible school. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. <clears throat> On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down, and study the word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986 and we'll register you today. And other announcements coming up uh, this weekend, uh, uh, December the 1st uh, is on Saturday, the uh, men's fellowship breakfast is, is uh, going to be taking place at 9 a.m. And we hope, trust, and pray that you will be a part of that. And uh, all of our brethren come out and, and be with us. Uh, also, uh, we, uh, the annual church meeting will be Sunday, December the 9th, uh, following the second service. And we will hold our annual church meeting. Uh, and planning session. Plan now to attend and bring your recommendations uh, uh, and suggestions for uh, our 2019 theme. Uh, so you make sure you do that. And, uh, come be with us. Also, the annual ministry appreciation luncheon will be held on. Uh, uh, December the 22nd, that's Saturday, December the 22nd at, uh, uh, at noon. And we are looking to have a great time again, a lot of fun, uh, get together and talk about our ministries. Uh, so you make sure that uh, you come and uh, be with us. Uh, and uh, then We'll be getting prepared for our New Year's Eve program. Um, uh, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, 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 Mildred Purvis, uh, 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 New Year's Eve uh, ministry. And we're looking forward to you being a part of that. So God bless you. Praise be unto God. Also, uh, we want to remind you that uh, coming up, uh, uh, we're, we'll be having our uh, Village Learning and Development Centers after school uh, program uh, summer break. I, I want to urge you to uh, consider making a donation during this period to our Village Learning and Development Center. Uh, we operate totally on the gifts and uh, uh, donations that are that come. Um, consider consider a, a, a tax write-off and send that to us. Praise be unto God. Um, in area-wide news, uh, the. North Central Church of Christ, Ladies of Liberty, extend an invitation to a ladies' luncheon, holiday luncheon, on Saturday, December the 15th at 12 noon. So let's keep them uh, in, our, in our prayers. Um, now let's remember our sick and our shut in. Um, 
<clears throat> our sick Linda Brano, uh, Sister Bertha Frazier, Sister Jackie uh, Holman, Sister Savannah uh, Johnson, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, Sister Paula Stevenson Thomas. Uh, uh, pray for brothers Larry Denny, Brother Angelo Pentegrast, uh, Brother William Robinson, and uh, Brother David uh, Wilson. We want to uh, announce to you, uh, it's shared with you, that Sister uh, Brenda Mitchell has passed on. We met with the family on yesterday, and the funeral will be uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. The viewing of the body will be Saturday at 11, starting at 11, and the, the, the funeral will start at 1 p.m. So we're looking forward to that, and we hope that you will be able to come and demonstrate your love and your support to the family. Praise be unto God. Our shut-in, Sister Mamie Cartwright, uh, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Vivian Wakefield, Sister Mary Wood, and pray for Brother James Fraser. Pray for those who are going through the dialysis and other treatments. I want to pray for our our dear friend, Sister Jesse Bennett, Sister Darlene uh, Hayes, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, uh, there in Evansville, and uh, uh, Sister Rita Kamishi. Uh, we pray that you'll be with them and help them and all their sicknesses. Remember brothers Jasper Crenshaw, brother Dennis Reynolds, brother Richard Rose, brother Gary King, and uh, uh, brother Frederick Hines, and uh, keep uh, uh, my oldest brother Marvin Stevenson Jr. in your prayers. Praise be uh, unto God. Now we want to Give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. I want to say thank you to Sister Linda Bird, uh, Sister Rose Coleman, uh, Brother Alvester Curry, Sister Tiana Curry, Brother Tony, and Sister Chiquita Curry, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Shabanda Hicks. Sister Jacqueline Holman, Brother James Malone, Sister Maris Marceline Marshall, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Sister Ethel Rivers, Sister Angelica Robertson, Sister Amanda Smith, Brother Jeremiah uh, Smith, Brother Clark, and Sister Ellen uh, Stannard, uh, Sister Joey Stevenson, uh, Sister Jaquay Thomas, Sister Elaine Watt, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you all. Thank you so much for your generosity and kindness towards this radio, uh, this ministry. Praise be unto God. Now, let's Go to our God in prayer. Dear Father, and God in heaven, as we come before you this day, we first of all give thanks for your divine mercies that you allowed us to wake up to the brand new mercy that you have given us this day. And we thank you. We praise your name because there is no other name that is given among men whereby 
we can have salvation. So we thank you for that. And we approach you, we approach you with humbleness, recognizing you're the great power and force of the universe, that there is none besides you. And that's why we honor you as God. But we also honor you as Father. And it's that Father that we come to. And we ask that you would hear our, our plea. The comfort of our people are at, is in need, oh God. We have a sister who has gone on home on the other side. And she leaves her family in mourning. So I pray for the family. And I ask that you be with uh, our dear sister's family. And Lord, I pray, I pray not only for them, there are those who have lost loved ones uh, in this city and all throughout our community. I pray for them. I pray for your, your divine comfort that it somehow find its way to everybody that has lost a loved one. So I pray for them. And oh Lord, I pray that you would be with our sick and shut in those that are going through dialysis and radiation and chemotherapy and other treatments please please be with them oh god and i ask now that you bless every home every individual that is listening to the morning meditation of god may they receive a blessing from your word today may your servant speak the truth in love May I give those things that you want people to have and not what I am looking for. So I thank you today. Praise your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's open up our Bibles. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, and blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are you, you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your rewards in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Philippians. The chapter is two and the verse is 25. The word of the Lord said, But I considered it necessary to send you Epiraeus, my brother, co worker, and fellow soldier, as well as your messenger and minister to my need. Wednesday, November the 28th. 2018, our daily devotion entitled The Gift of Encouragement. Some people, some people know just what to say and what to do to encourage others who are going through difficult times. Their words give strength to those who are discouraged and comfort to those who are grieving. These people are sensitive to God's voice. They are, they are not self-centered, are unaware of the struggles of those around them. They are, they are the one we immediately seek when we enter a crisis in our lives. They are welcome visitors when we are in distress for their presence sustains them. Amen. Scripture testifies of many whom God enabled to encourage others. When Moses was overwhelmed by his work, Jethro went to him and encouraged him. Jethro gave Moses wise counsel that caused, uh, uh, amen, that he that eased the strain of his every day. Exodus chapter eighteen, verses one through twenty-seven. Go and read that. Why, when Paul was imprisoned, far from those who loved him, Aperodius risked his health and safety in order to go to Paul and to minister to him. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25 through. 30. Later on, the apostle, the apostle urged Timothy to come and visit him. For Paul had found strength and encouragement in Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said that he wanted him 
and in verse nine, make every effort to come to me soon. And then in Philippians two and verse 19 and 20 says, but I hope and I and trust in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus, soon to send Timothy to you so that I may also be encouraged and cheered by leaving, uh, by learning news of you. For I have no one, I like, I have no one like him. No, not, no one of so kind of a spirit who will be so gentle, genuinely uh, gentle and interest in your welfare and devoted to your interest. Yes, the Apostle Paul asked Timothy to bring Mark also. Mark was a kind of a friend Paul needed when he was enduring hardship. Philemon 2, uh, 24, Paul also relied on Luke for encouragement. When, when everyone else was absent or preoccupied, Luke could be found with Paul. In fact, in Paul says in the letter to Timothy, he says, Luke alone is with me. Greet Mark and bring, get Mark and bring him with you. For he is very helpful to me for the ministry. Yes, Paul experienced trials throughout his life, but God sustained him by placing godly friends around him who provided support in practical and sacrificial ways. Brothers and sisters, God, God wants to develop. He wants to develop you into the kind of a friend who can strengthen others. The words you share and the things you do can bring comfort and encouragement to your family, to your friend, your neighbor, your co-worker. Will you allow God to mold you into an encourager? Praise be unto God. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of Philippians, chapter 2 and verse number 25. Now, let's go to our featured study. found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 15 through 20. The Apostle Paul writing, he asks, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and i will sing with the understanding also else when thou shalt bless with the spirit how shall it be he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at thy at thy giving of thanks seeing he understandeth not what that thou art saying. For thou verily give, giveth thanks well, 
but the others is not edified. Thank my God. Thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice, I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children and understanding, how be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be ye men. The Apostle Paul here talks, takes time out to express to the, the church at Corinth his own personal ex worship experience. He, uh, he worships by praying and singing, both with the spirit and with the understanding. Note the critical point throughout this passage. Paul is not denying or forbidding the exercise of the gifts of tongues, he is insisting on the proper use of the gifts. He says that he himself will do it with the understanding also. The apostle seems to be wanting people to make sure that their, their whole attention is not on the on the ecstasy of their ability to talk to, with God through an unknown tongue. Paul says, listen, if you can do it, I can do it a lot better. But I've learned how, I've, I've learned how to humble myself. I've learned how to not put myself out there as some great one, as some spiritual one. No, when I pray in the spirit, I pray in the understanding also. When I sing in the spirit, I sing with the understanding also. If I pray, I want you to be able to understand my prayer uh, and understand what I'm saying. I'm praying in the spirit, but I'm praying with an understanding also. My brothers and sisters, God is wanting you and I to recognize. Don't get caught up in your spirituality. It is a it is a time I apologize uh, the medication that uh, Taking it, it really takes a toll on my on my voice and and the dryness in my mouth. So y'all just be patient with me. the Paul the apostle. He this he stresses that it does not pay uh, our uh, that he did not pray or sing without understanding what he is praying and what he is singing about. He gives us two things. He, he wishes others to understand and to confirm what he prays and sings. The illustration is pointed. If you bless God with the spirit, that is with a tongue, how shall the, uh, how shall the unlearned, those who do not uh, understand tongue, say amen? That is, uh, confirm what you say, agreeing and sharing in your, in your prayer and praise is impossible for no one understands what you're saying. And then, and, 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 and that's why you've got to speak with clarity, speak 
plainly, with understanding. So Paul said, now listen, don't get caught up in your, in your tongue speaking. And again, again, so we we don't ever we don't we don't lose you to the to the the truth of, of the word. Now I I'm taking you back to the book of First Corinthians 13. Because you you I want you to be clear. And it and it says love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be done away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is, a, is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I I needed I needed these special gifts. Paul speaking to about the church now. The church was in its infant stages. That's why God used these special gifts in order. Why? Because that which is perfect had not shown up yet, and that which is perfect is the Word of God the perfect law of liberty, the law of God, the Bible. The Bible was in its, uh, uh, in, in its written stages when Paul wrote to, to the church at Corinth. Paul says he speaks in tongues often, but, it, but when he is in the church, he always uses uh, another gift. Uh, nothing could be any clearer about Paul's practice of tongues than this verse. Paul had the gift of tongues and used the gift more than all of them. However, in the church, he would rather speak five clearly understood words than 10,000 words in a tongue that nobody could understand. And when we understood, when we, under, when we come to that knowledge, we come to that humility in our lives. Paul, he used his gift of tongues in his private worship. You know, and Paul urges one, He urges one understand, one thing, understanding and edification. This is the strong imperative, force, a forceful statement. Be not children in understanding. How, it, how be it, if in malice be ye children, but in understanding be ye men. It seems as though tongues had so uh, divided the, the Corinthian church that bitterness and malice had become quite a problem between some of the members. Some of the believers just did not understand the gifts, their importance, or their purpose. Therefore, they, they were acting like children. You, you, I'm going to take my ball and go home. I'm going. I, I'm not going to give anything. I'm. I'm just going. I, I, I won't give. And you see, if you if you miss me now, I got news for you. When you you carry that kind of attitude, God knows how to put a hold in your pocket and give it over to somebody who has a better spirit. So we need to be careful. The Apostle Paul is urging uh, them. To be strong in their, uh, the way they are, they are uh, teaching and, and, and be positive uh, about what you're doing uh, in your own personal praise and worship. One thing was certain. There was to be no place 
uh, for divisiveness over the gifts. There was to be only love and mature understanding. Believers are to be as mature men and women and not as children. The, the apostle, I, I just believe the apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Hebrews chap chapter five, go, go with me over there, Hebrews chapter five. Is is a good teaching here. Paul says, he says in verse twelve, he says that for when, for when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that is for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Brothers and sisters, when you find yourself squabbling over faith, and you 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 need milk, you're drinking milk. They the Corinthian church was was a church blessed, but they became like babes because they were quarreling and they were self selfish, self righteous. The Lord looked at him and said, "You are, <laughs> you 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 are carnal." In fact, in First Corinthians chapter three, verses one and two, Paul, the apostle, you remember this, and he says, and, "And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ." I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here too, that ye are not able to bear it, neither, neither uh, yet now are ye able. Brothers and sisters, when a person is dead stuck, dead stuck on the elementary things of Christianity, has failed to grow in their Christian journey. Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In the book of Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter, he says, for when the time uh, uh, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, <clears throat> but the, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they do wait and wait, lie in wait to deceive you. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> God has a plan for us, and that is to grow us out of our childish faith and into the maturity of faith. Peter says, the way you do this in first Peter chapter two and verse two, as newborn babes, desire the sincere 
milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Brothers and sisters, you, you've, got to, you've got to be able to get off of milk. You gotta, get, you gotta be able to get away from, off of the childishness of milk. Milk is, is, is for children, but strong meat is for those who knows the Lord, and and it's it is that that the Lord wants you and I to be able to grow and mature. So we're we're not sitting there talking about who got this and who got that. Isaiah the prophet writing about writing to uh, to Israel. He says in verse uh, number um, nine, he says, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is, this is the rest wherein ye may calls the weary to rest and this is the the freshening yet they would not hear but the word of the lord was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little there a little that they might be might go and fall backward and be brethren snared and taken brothers and sisters if you're going to mature in the word of uh uh you've got to mature in your understanding of the word of god that is the only way that you're going to be able to grow out of your out of your uh, uh, infancy stage, it means you've got to come to the Bible class. You've got to come uh, and get up. On, uh, uh, and that's that's what we're trying to do here. And we bless you. We 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 know the word the word of God is blessing those of you that get up early and and meditate with God. Some of you. I older you can't get up at this time and I and but you're watching what we're teaching this is the teaching of the Lord and the Lord is teaching that's why I open up the book and go verse by verse because I want you to understand the whole Bible and you, because uh, he says Paul to Timothy he told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 5, chapter 2 and verse 15, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brothers and sisters, the apostle again is saying to the, to the church at Corinth, As long as you need tongue speaking, you're an infant. But when that which is perfect is come, you need to know how to put this thing to the side. How to put it to the side and let God be the ruler of us all. Praise be unto God. Going to open up the prayer line. 
And uh, if you would like to have prayer, you give us a call. We'll pray with you. We'll pray. Our God may strengthen your life. Life those around you. Again, I want to share with you that Sister Brenda Mitchell, Sister Mitchell came to us from the Cane Run Church with Brother Byrne. And uh, we're going to we're going to bury her on Saturday. December, uh, December the 1st, yeah. And uh, the viewing of the body will take place at, uh, starting at 11, and uh, then we'll have the funeral at 1 p.m. Let's keep that in mind. That's where we'll be. God, God be with you uh, this, coming, this coming week. Show them. You don't know, many of you of Midwest don't know the family, but uh, uh, Sister uh, Mitchell has been in church uh, there at West Broadway, started off there. She ended up with here with us from coming from Cane Run Church. So we just want to all uh, know, uh, come out and meet the family, greet the family with love and kindness, and let God be, uh, be glorified in your comfort to this family. Violent, praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Good morning, Brother Jerry. How are you this morning? I am blessed and highly favored. How's Brother Kevin this morning? Truly blessed, Brother Jerry, and, and highly favored. Amen. Brother Jerry, I had a, just, just such, a, such a good time being back in in worship all Sunday, boy, I almost didn't know how to act. Amen, amen. Yes, it was a good seeing everyone. Yes. And, and being back in the house of the Lord. I'd like to have special prayer for you and the family. Thank you. And my daughter and my grandson. Amen. My dad and myself. Yes. My sister Linda and 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 and, and, and Lord's will. Uh, hopefully this they'll reach up some kind of agreement with this UAW contract. Yeah. And my sister will be able to come home. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to this day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Jerry, I'm just so thankful for everything. I'd like to have prayer for the universe. Because we all stand in the way and in need of it. Thank you so much. Have a Amen. Day. God bless you. Praise God. Sister, Sister Rita and Brother David uh, Amishi asked us to please pray for my mom and dad and all elderly people that they feel find Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus is present and more of him than, than ever. So we want to continue to pray for one another. Pray for each other. Those of you on Facebook Live, don't stop praying uh, for each other every day, every moment. We, Jesus said, I would that men always pray. You know, what is he saying? He says, what does it mean, Jesus? Well, he says, your heart and your mind ought to always be on praying and thanksgiving to the Lord. Uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. That's what it's saying. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Yes, please. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And how is Sister Mormon this morning? I am blessed and highly favored. And just thanking God for what he has already done. Amen. Amen. For what he's doing right now and for what he's going to do because I got his word and I got his promise. Thank you. 
Thank I you. I can stand on his word, Pastor, when I can't stand on my feet, and that's good news. That's real good news. That's good news regardless of my circumstances. Amen. I'm on my way for to take some tests this morning. All right. So I need the prayer warriors to pray for Amen. me. And Amen. And I get a good report. So God is able to do all things. Yes, he is. Yes, yes he is. I look to him. But I like to have prayer for you and your recovery. I, I want you to know if I don't get on the phone, I pray for you every day. Thank you. Pray for you and all your concerns because I know they are many. I'd like to have prayer for you and your church family and for uh, uh, Sister Marjorie and Marcia and for Mother Woods and Brother Keith. Amen. I'd like to have prayer for my church family and you come to this day Baptist Church, my pastor, Pastor Robert Drake, Senior, and, and First Lady, Lady D. Yeah. Like to have prayer for all the associate ministers. Like to have prayer for all the morning meditation listeners for the ones that's not able to call in for one reason or another. We thank God for the opportunity to call in for them. Amen. And I like to have prayer for all the ones that I already prayed for. I've already prayed for So I want you to pray for them. Amen. So I have a good day and I love you. And you have a blessed, blessed day. Praise be unto God. Uh, Sister Nancy, Moore, praise be unto God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the prayer line is open. You can call us at 571-1240. 571-1240. That's, that area code is 502 uh, if you're outside the city. 502-571-1240. Those of you on Facebook Live, if you want to send uh, uh, us a, a message, we'll pray uh, for you. So let the Lord be the Lord of your life. Let him be your king, your king of kings, and your Lord of lords. Yes, trust him in the Lord. And don't try to lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord. And he will, he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, your maturing into the word of God is what's going to save you and anchor your life. That's, that's, where, that's where we must always be. We must be counting on the Lord and trusting. If God said it, it'll be so. Whatever you read and study today from God's word, his message to you will be so. It may not come the way you want it to come, but it's gonna come, because you know why? God's word will not go out from him void. His word, when you open up this book, his word that you study and you read, uh, it, it, it will not come back to God void. Because God's word is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So God bless you. Pray with me. Father, I pray for Sister Marmon and Brother Kevin, Sister Rita, Kamishi's family. I pray for all of us, oh God, for we all stand in need of prayer. Now go with us today and keep us in your, in your hand, oh God. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. Look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you. So 